Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Buffalo Sports Center. Today we are going to preview this lopsided Week Seven matchup between the four and two Buffalo Bills and the one and five New England Patriots. But before we get to the preview, make sure to hit that like button and a subscribe. We are ticking away, getting closer to two thousand subscribers here on the YouTube. Just surpassed five thousand followers on the Instagram. Just surpassed a hundred members on the Discord. So. Make sure to check out all three of those links down in the description below. Now let's tw quickly talk about the Bills offense who for now two straight weeks have really, really been pretty rough. Against the Jaguars, they didn't get going until late in the fourth quarter and then there was a, suddenly an offensive explosion. Well, that offensive explosion didn't necessarily happen against the Giants, although after a scoreless first half, Josh Allen in this unit began to run the ball, get physical along the line of scrimmage, and they scored two touchdowns. They could have had a couple more field goals if Tyler Bass had missed two field goals from practically the same spot going practically the same way. But for Josh Allen, it was another so-so performance for him. He went 19 for 30 for 169 yards, two touchdown passes, and an interception. Although I will say that second touchdown pass to tight end Quinton Morris was phenomenal. Somehow he got into a tight window. Quinn Morris was surrounded by three giant defenders, and somehow they were able to squeak out a win and squeak out two touchdowns on offense. Now for the running game, it was mainly James Cook, who had 14 carries for 71 yards. And when, when it wasn't him, it was Latavius Murray in the short game, getting 12 carries for 45 yards. And one of the major storylines for this game was how Damian Harris left the game with an apparent neck injury, had to be transported out of the arena via an ambulance. And it was a very... Very scary moment there for the Buffalo Bills. We all were thinking, oh no, again, this is going to be another DeMar Hamlin situation. But no, Damian Harris, a quick update, is better. He's moving all of his extremities and has been released from the hospital at the time of this recording. So that is a huge positive for the Bills going into this Week 7 game. Now in the receiving game, it was... Basically, Josh Allen throwing to one man and one man only, Stephon Diggs. He had 10 catches for 100 yards, and everybody else combined had seven catches for just over 40 yards, which is by no means good enough. That's actually pretty bad. Gabe Davis had a terrible fumble early in the first quarter when it seemed like the Bills offense was starting to get its feet underneath him. Dawson Knox, he's been practically invisible this season. And he continued to be that way on Sunday night as he had three catches for 17 yards and dropped what would have been a game-winning catch late in the fourth quarter. His drop eventually let the Giants go back the other way and nearly win it. And uh, Dalton Kincaid, the other rookie tight end for the Bills, was out. with a, in, He was in concussion protocol. We shall see if he will suit up for this Week 7 game. My bet is that he does. We never know, though, with concussions. But moving on now, this Bills offense will be countered by an offense that is struggling way more than them, and that is the Patriots offense, led by Bill O'Brien, Mac Jones, and the rest of this very mid-team. Now, they should be mid, and they were mid last year. But this season, things have really fallen off a cliff. Mac Jones has struggled mightily, and I mean mightily. He's only had five touchdown passes this season, seven interceptions. And on Sunday against the Vegas Raiders, he went 24 for 33 for 200 yards and an interception. It's been really bad for him. He's been pulled a couple of times in favor of Bailey Zappi. That was most recently in the blowout loss to the Dallas Cowboys. And now Bill Belichick brought up Malik Cunningham from the practice squad. So that is a further piece of competition. Maybe we see him be more utilized this week against the Bills, who struggle to contain uh, double-edged quarterbacks like Cunningham, as we saw in the Bills' efforts to contain Tyrod Taylor last Sunday night. And the running game, which usually supports this 
Patriots offense. It hasn't been supporting them this season. Ramondre Stevenson has been pretty lackluster, and on Sunday he only had 10 carries for 46 yards, but he had a rushing touchdown. But overall, it's been a really, really poor season from the running game, and it's been an even poorer season for the secondary and the primary weapons for this Patriots offense. They have the likes of Ezekiel Elliott, another running back picked up from the Dallas Cowboys. He's done virtually nothing. Kendrick Bourne elevated into a more significant role after the departure of Jacoby Myers. He hasn't done very much. Juju Smith-Schuster hasn't done very much and has been on and off the field. Devontae Parker, oh my god, he's been bad. And he also was really bad on Sunday where he could have helped the Patriots win the game. Mac Jones threw a perfect ball out of his own end zone. Pass was intended for Devontae Parker coming down in their sidelines, and he dropped it off the fingertips and dropped. That could have won the game for the Patriots, but instead the Raiders would go on to sack Jones in the end zone for a safety. And then there's Hunter Henry and Mike Gesicki, two tight ends who – don't really provide much in the blocking game, and they don't provide much in the passing game. So for the Patriots, they really need to get themselves going because this their Patriots defense isn't here to save them this season. And they this Patriots defense has been battling through some major injuries. And unlike the Bills, where it seems that they have been able to overcome injuries to their star players, the Patriots, for the first time in a very long time, do not have depth anywhere in the defensive department after the losses of Matt Judon and Christian Gonzalez it's been very very bad for this Patriots defense they're led by Devon Godshaw on the defensive line Jawan Bentley in the linebacking core along with Josh Uche they also have Kyle Duggar and Jabril Peppers and now JC Jackson brought back from the LA Chargers in the secondary but it all hasn't stopped teams from scoring at will against them the Cowboys did it uh, the Jets were the only team I can remember who did not do something like that so for the defense it's been really frustrating very unlike a Bill Belichick led defense they're gonna have to do better they're gonna have to really carry the load if they were gonna win this game because the Bills defense has been surprisingly just as good after they lost Matt Milano and Tredavious White, and for a little while, Greg Rousseau, but now he's back. But it's been another defensively hampered season for this defense, yet unlike last year, guys like Terrell Bernard have stepped up. Guys like Dorian Williams, Christian Benford, Dane Jackson. Backups, relatively no-name kind of guys, they're stepping up, and I really want to highlight rookie Dorian Williams, who is stepping in for the rest of the season for Matt Milano, who went down with a broken leg. Uh, Dorian Williams was phenomenal, and I mean phenomenal against the Giants. He was everywhere. He made a seven, I'm sorry, six solo tackles, one assisted tackle. He was everywhere on the field, helped contain Saquon to just over 50 yards rushing on the day, outside of one drive where... Saquon was able to break away for a couple of big runs. He was unheard of, and that was thanks to Doreen Williams. Terrell Bernard, like I mentioned already, has been also great. Two rookie, basically rookies in the linebacking core, and then along the defensive line, that's where the Bills' biggest strong suit has been this season as they are tied for first in the NFL in terms of sacks because Leonard Floyd picked up way after free agency began, has already six and a half sacks this season. A.J. Epinesa, who has come alive this year, has four sacks of his own. Uh, it's been Greg Rousseau has three and a half. Uh, Ed Oliver has three and a half as well. So it's been really, really good. And now they add Von Miller, who is still being pitch counted, snap counted, whatever you want to call it, after, his, after coming back from an ACL tear. He's not necessarily made a huge impact yet. Looks like the Bills are trying to keep him ready to go, very fresh for later in the season when the Bills have to face off against some of the mega powerhouses in the NFL. But folks, what do you think about this matchup between the Bills and the Patriots? Do you think the Bills have as much struggles against a one-win team as they did last week against the Giants? 
and the Patriots maybe pull something out of this game? Or do the Bills run rampant over the Patriots like so many other teams have this season? Anyways, I was done. This is Buffalo Sports Center. Make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe. And now, let's take a look at what our BSC panel plus our special Patriots fan guest is predicting for this Week 7 matchup. And I know this is your time. You'd like to keep us updated. Yeah, we'll keep everybody posted on Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Miami and the Jets were underway as New England decided to defer after winning the toss. And here's Hines on the run back, breaking a tackle and taking it past midfield. And down the sideline he goes. This is storybook. An opening kickoff return for Tamar Hamlin. And this place is...